Many of us are taught slavery came to an end with the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. But for enslaved people in Texas, freedom didn't come until June 19, 1865. Known as Juneteenth, now we recognize it as a day to celebrate how far Black people have come and a reminder of how justice and freedom have been delayed for Black people in America. From Juneteenth onward, we begin to see how progress unfolds and barriers are built. Leading us to the height of Jim Crow, where black Americans continue to be treated as second-class citizens a whole generation later. One hundred years since Juneteenth, we reach a critical moment in American history, where a movement full of young black voices so powerful comes together. That it creates real change. What we know is that progress doesn't happen overnight. It ebbs and flows. It blossoms and grows. It takes the work of every generation to rise up and act. No matter how far it feels that we've come, there is still work left to be done. Like every generation before us, we must raise our voices in our streets and at the ballot box. We must be at the center of our political process. We must fight for a more free, just, and equal America. Until we achieve that America, our work continues on. Many of us are. All right, that was a great video to level set. Hi, everybody. My name is Stephanie Young. I am the executive director of When We All Vote, and we are so excited to have each and every one of you join us here. I am in Los Angeles. It is still sunny. It is still the daytime here. I know many of you are from all around this country. I've seen it in the chat. I'd like to see it even more in the chat. Please let us know where you're joining us from right now. We want to make sure that we're building and continuing to build community. I see folks from DC. I've seen Georgia, my home state. Um, so please let us know where you're, where you're dialing in from uh, this evening so that we're able to make sure a lot of Georgia. Wow. I'm not, oh, I saw Hampton too as well. Um, I went to Hampton University, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, let us know where you're, where you're calling from and who you're affiliated with or how long you've been around uh, with When We All Vote. We are starting a new chapter within this organization as we are expanding you know, our work um, in a multitude of ways. And one of the things that we're trying to do is take advantage of moments. And as we embark upon Juneteenth, um, which is a, a huge moment to recognize the progress uh, that African-Americans in this country have made, uh, but also to recognize uh, the fact that um, those uh, living in Texas um, were not aware of the Emancipation Proclamation until two years after that. Um, I grew up all over this country, but I only found out really about Juneteenth until I was in Texas and I graduated from high school there. And, and, and I know that um, everyone didn't grow up with Juneteenth celebrations, but it's growing. Um, and we know that you all are planning potentially celebrations or you might have the day off and we wanted to make it a day of action. Um, you know, right after uh, Juneteenth, it was a very hard time in this country for, for years, for hundreds of years, okay? Um, we, we've seen progress uh, very, very slowly and it's gonna take us um, working together still to see the next level of progress and all of the barriers to voting uh, that we saw African-Americans, other people of color and women face in this country, um, unfortunately haven't gone away. 
Um, I don't have to tell you all this. I'm sure you're very involved and you're focused and you're watching the news and you're keeping up, but you know that there are 48 states uh, where mostly Republican uh, legislators have either proposed voter suppression laws, passed them, um, or they are, they are waiting for debate and for vote uh, right now. And what that means is that we got to be on the ready and we have to make sure that we're doing all that we can, not only just to educate voters, so they're prepared to vote in every election because we have elections this year, we have elections next year. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're register, registering even more people. Um, and we think that this Juneteenth will be that opportunity to do that so that we can help to, to end some of the barriers that we are seeing at the polls. A couple of things I want to just uh, remind you guys of what we worked on together. Despite a global pandemic, um, and all the voter suppression taxes we just saw in 2020, we showed up in record numbers. That is good news. This was the largest voter turnout uh, in the history of this country, especially for black people and brown people and other people of color. Uh, you all texted your friends, your family members, your neighbors, you got them registered and ready to make their plans to vote. You showed up to our virtual couch parties. Uh, hopefully you can have some couch parties, not couch parties, but some real parties um, once we get through this pandemic. Um, we, you also showed up to protests. Um, uh, you disseminate our voter registration materials and together we were able to help register over 500,000 people. But as I said at the top, this is just the beginning. Our work is not done. And this Juneteenth, we want to do something different. Um, and we want to incorporate voter registration into the celebrations that you may or may not be having. Um, and we know that, um, you know, even during our time in lockdown, we were able to really accomplish so much. So imagine what we can do now safely together to get more people ready and registered to vote. Um, and there are no more days off. Um, we, we sat down and talked to Mrs. Obama right at the end of this, end of 2020 and said, how are we going to shake things up and really hit the ground running in 21 so that we're prepared for 22 and we're prepared for 24 and we're really uh, setting an agenda going forward and, and we decided there are absolutely no more years off. Um, there's no off years and on years. This is an on year and we need you now more than ever. So with that, um, I'd like to, to introduce you to one of our major partners in this fight, um, Madam Supreme Basilis, uh, the 30th international president of my beloved sorority Alpha Kappa Alpha, Sorority Incorporated, Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover. Um, Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover, she ascended to become the 30th international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha, uh, Incorporate, Sorority Incorporated um, in July of 2018. Um, in addition to this prestigious leadership role, she also serves as the president of Tennessee State University, a historically black college. Um, I'm also an HBCU grad. If you're an HBCU grad, please let us know in that chat. Where did you go? I went to Hampton University. Um, in her role, Dr. Glover provides leadership to the 300,000 members of Alcap Alpha Incorporated all over this country and this world. Um, a life member, Dr. Glover was initiated into the Alpha Psi chapter at Tennessee State. Um, and it's been a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated for over 40 years, which is a huge deal. Um, we partnered with so many people, a lot of folks within Divine Nine. I, I saw other folks from the Divine Nine jump on the call because I saw either jackets or, you know, your, your, your placeholders were your photos. Please let us know. I also saw Lisa Johnson Wigan, who I know is a very proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So if you are a part of the Divine Nine, please let us know that by letting us know uh, what sorority and or fraternity you are representing and where you are. We'd love <laughs> see that. Uh, but partners like Alpha Kappa Alpha really helped to help uh, and led by example. Um, you know, their members or our my sorors were able to help train over 6,000 voting squad captains. That is huge. Registering thousands of voters. Um, and we want to do that all over again every year. Um, and because of our efforts together, our, uh, you know, the work that they were able to do, um, they created more people than ever who researched their ballot, voting options, explored their voting rights, and found their polling places and actually made a pledge to vote. AK is a great example of what we can all do together. And that's why we're so grateful for Dr. Glover, our Madam Supreme Basilis, and the time that she has to spend with each and every one of us to talk about the work that we were able to accomplish and hopefully inspire you all in your own individual capacity to join our efforts as well, because this work is so incredibly important. Um, but with that, I would like to turn it over to Madam Supreme Basilis, Dr. Glover. Thank you very much. Thank you to Preece Johnson, uh, Stephanie Young, and to all who are assembled tonight. I am uh, Glenda Glover, and I serve as the international president 
and CEO of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, also serves as president of Tennessee State University. I am so honored to be here tonight as we kick off this June 10th action weekend, this timely uh, weekend by presenting our plan for voter registration in preparation for all the elections that will come up. We continue the most important topic of this decade, and that is voting, registering and voting. Alpha Kappa Alpha has been a great supporter of this initiative to encourage our members and members of Divine Nine to ensure that we all get registered to vote. Alpha Kappa Alpha has been doing the work of empowering our communities for over 100 years. And we've been an exciting partner of when we all vote since Michelle Obama, former First Lady Michelle Obama launched the organization in 2018. So in 2020 alone last year, not only did Alpha Kappa Alpha register 100,000 to vote, but we also trained nearly 6,000 voting squad captains. So we're, our commitment is there, our commitment is, is, it speaks for itself. So we've also focused on voter protection, voter suppression, voter intimidation, all those efforts that, are, that cause us not to go to the polls to vote. But as we all know, we must register first and then move on to the step two, getting everyone out to vote. But the upcoming elections are so important to our current and future lives because many issues will be on that ballot that comes up uh, starting this year and next year to the greatest extent. Healthcare will be on that ballot. The discrimination in healthcare among people of color that has not gone away, that's on the ballot. It's about racism and justice, that, that injustice that will remain front and center and will be on next year's ballot. Blaming black folk for the evils of this day, that will be on their ballot starting this year and continuing to next year. The, the next com the upcoming elections will be about education, HBCUs, that's definitely on the ballot. And make no mistake, the freedom to vote will always be on the ballot for the next few years. So let's do the first step and that is register. And while we have a lot to celebrate and a lot to, to acknowledge, Juneteenth is also a reminder that the work is not done. Just like each of you, we remain committed to improving our democracy. We saw in 2020 across the country in places like Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, the impact we can have when more people than ever participated in our elections. We try to support and defend our democracy because that's what's ultimately on this ballot. That's what's in the local ballots. That's what's on the state ballot, that's on the federal ballots, defending our democracy. So tonight is encouraging because we realize that changing the culture of our nation starts with us. So to make sure our friends and family and neighbors and community exercise a long and hard right to vote. So it's time to, for us to stay at work, get to work, stay at work. Before I go any further, I wanna thank you. I wanna say thank you to the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha who continue to do this work with dedication and commitment. I also wanna give a shout out to all the, the nine black Greek letter sororities and fraternities and members of organizations like the National Urban League, the NACP, 100 Black Men of America, the 100 Black Women, uh, the, the Lynx, Jack and Jill, and National Council of Negro Women, TLOD, Black Women's Roundtable, and there was so many more. They've all done tremendous work in getting our communities out to vote. So whether this is your first time or you're a seasoned volunteer, this training is the perfect time to learn how to create your own voter registration event to get the toolkit and get started with when we all vote. And this, as Ms. Obama said once before, we all play a role in this democracy. We need to remember the power of every vote. Let's continue to work together to work. We know that faith without works is dead. So let's get registered, let's get this job done. God bless each of you and God bless this when we all vote team. Thank you very much, I'm turning it back over. Thank you, Dr. Glover. Thank you so much for those words of inspiration. I really hope that everyone joining tonight, you know, understands that really the power is in our hands. And what we're seeing right now with this 
this coordinated effort around the country to ensure that people don't have access or the right to vote is an understanding that you all, we all collectively are so powerful. So whether or not you are in the divine nine or not, whether you went to an HBCU or not, no matter what race you are, what color you are, where you come from, what state you live in, we have a role to play together to move this country forward uh, and to make sure that it works for absolutely everybody. And the only way we can do that is voting. So tonight, I really hope that you all take advantage of this, this training uh, and this opportunity uh, to take action in your communities um, at a different time uh, this summer, and that this is only the beginning of the work that we, we can do together. I can't wait to tell uh, Mrs. Obama about uh, the conversation that you all will have tonight, and I hope that you stay engaged uh, this evening, and thank you so much again. I know that you all could be with your families, your friends, you could be at dinner right now, you could be having a glass of wine and just chilling out, but you decided to take time and be with us and we're so incredibly grateful and with that i'd like to turn over to our deputy director of organizing she is bubbly and fun and she will keep you engaged uh, for the rest of this evening her name is ms arisa samani she is coming to you from washington we're all over washington state we're all over this country and that's also powerful the fact that we live in all of these different places and actually can take action um, in our state so arisa i'm turning it over to you thank you all right, thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you again, Dr. Glenda Glover for joining us for your wise words and for really firing up the chat box. Hello, everyone. It is so great to see you all. Um, you may notice that this meeting looks a little different uh, than our Zoom meetings in the past, uh, in that we can see each other, which I am really excited about. It is the first time I am seeing some of you, and some of these names are incredibly familiar to me. So it is so great to have you all here. And just a few ground rules, because we can all see and hear each other, just a a few guidelines for our time tonight. One, unless we are in Q&A, unless the floor is open and you have been called on and unmuted by our When We All Vote team, please keep yourself muted. It'll help us get through the training. We have so much information to cover, as Dr. Glover said. And two, if the floor is open and you would like to unmute yourself and say something and share a thought with the group, please raise your hand by going to the bottom of your screen, clicking reactions and clicking raise hand. I kinda, I kinda want us to all practice that together before we start tonight. So on the count of three, everyone go ahead, raise your hands, one, two, three. Yes. <laughs> wow, my screen lit up so much that I can't even see my script. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for letting me know that you are here. Thank you for being here. And let's get to work. Tonight, we have a few goals that are guiding our time together. One, we are going to identify the current significance of Juneteenth in connection with registering voters. Two, we are gonna share best practices when doing voter registration in our communities. Some of you are old pros at registering voters. Some of you are brand new. Wherever you are in your journey with us, you have a home here and we're gonna tell you everything you need to know. And lastly, we are gonna make sure that you feel ready to go out into the community and to support your neighbors, your friends, your family in checking their voter registration and in registering to vote. To get us there, we have this agenda to guide our time together. We've started to frame Juneteenth. We're gonna briefly go over the Juneteenth weekend of action and what we got ahead. We'll talk about how to have those voter registration conversations. And then we are gonna close with a little bit of homework uh, in the form of next steps. So to kick us off, I really wanna build on what Steph just said and acknowledge and celebrate our progress. Because despite a global pandemic, 
Despite voter suppression efforts, 160 million Americans cast their ballots in 2020, shattering voter turnout records and making history. And that is in part because of you all, because of your hard work. And this is incredible, this is energizing, and it's why we got to keep going. Because as we know, this is why people are trying to take that right to vote away. In 2021 alone, more than 400 bills have been introduced in 48 states across the country with a focus on deterring black, brown, and young voters from casting their ballots. We're calling it as we see it. We know that the power of the people is greater than the people in power, and they know that and they are afraid. And that is why we at When We All Vote know that if our vote didn't matter so much, folks wouldn't be trying so hard to take it away. So that is what we are up against. That is the moment that we face. And I am so curious, hop in the chat box or raise your hand if you would like to tell me, why are you showing up tonight? What is calling you to this moment? Are you incredibly passionate about getting your friends and family out to vote. Uh, Faye says our lives depend on it. That is absolutely right, Faye. Anyone else tell me why you are called to be here tonight. Tell me what this moment means to you, what these voter suppression efforts mean to you. Chambly says we must get out the vote for our children's future. Patrice says we want to register everyone. Um, I see a couple raised hands. Uh, Alexis, Sam, do we want to go ahead and mute one of our unmute one of our audience members to share what this moment means to them? Ingrid, do you want to go ahead and speak? Let's see. I don't think that we can hear you, Ingrid. Um, oh, what about we, now? There we go. You are live. Okay. I am in this meeting because I've registered over 500 people. I've knocked on doors. I gave out 500 Biden-Harris shirts. Um, and also they need Black women to take part in every office you can in your city and county and state. Um, I am trying to go out by the council or commissioner or school board. But we need you. And we need somebody to look like you on every ticket. That's why I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you're going to see that you lit up the chat box because a bunch of people agree with you. And that is why we are here tonight, because our country's democracy should look like our country's population. And because our right to vote is sacred and right now it is under threat. So thank you for mm -hmm. sharing, Ingrid. And thank you're you welcome. for being here tonight. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to what we are doing tonight, and that is talking about Juneteenth. Juneteenth is a day to celebrate freedom, culture, and progress. And as Ingrid just said, as Dr. Glover said, as Stephanie said, it is a call to acknowledge that our work is not over. Because two truths remain, Black lives are threatened and also the right to vote is threatened. And this day, Juneteenth, known as, uh, on, it's the 19th of June, that's a day where we hold two things. One, we are reflecting on an unjust past, but two, we're also holding hope and celebrating the culture and the fortitude and the strength of Black Americans. So this Juneteenth is a call to acknowledge that our work is not over. It is a celebration of how far we've come. And that brings me to our voting principles. So since our founding, When We All Vote has fought to expand access to voting, to increase participation in every election. And our voting principles are really our North Star. This is what we believe. We believe that every American should be able to easily register to vote by expanding online and automatic voter registration. We believe in expanding access through to, to voting through early, no excuse, in-person voting and voting by mail. 
We believe in making elections transparent and fair. We believe that Americans should be able to cast their ballots freely and equally. We believe that every American should have full representation in Congress. And we believe in restoring voting rights for returning citizens so that they are able to make their voices heard. So I'm curious, let me know in that chat box what stands out to you, because as we know tonight, this is a conversation and feel free guys, as we're moving through the training tonight, let me know what you're thinking and let me know what you're feeling in that chat box. I'm seeing hashtag DC statehood from Sharon. Sharon, that is absolutely right. And our team is with you because here is what we know. Equal access to the ballot box is the cornerstone of a healthy democracy. And right now, that right is threatened for many people, and especially for Black and Brown people in this country. So that is why we are taking action this Juneteenth. That is the moment that we are in. And that is why we are calling on you to participate by organizing COVID conscious voter registration drives at local Juneteenth festivals and celebrations in your communities. And if you don't have a Juneteenth festival or celebration in your community, you can still participate with us. You can find an area like a high traffic area in your community, a library, a grocery store, uh, and, and stand outside with, with your QR code and, and pitch up a voter registration table, or you can have voter registration be part of your family barbecue or whatever you are doing that weekend. Just make registering voters a part of this larger conversation about justice, about equity, and about progress. So let's move a little bit into what that looks like and what you will be doing for this weekend of action. As I mentioned, there are three things that you can do this Juneteenth. One, find a festival to plug into if there is one in your community. Two, if there isn't a Juneteenth festival in your community, you can canvas in a high traffic area. I know that some of you have registered voters outside of grocery stores or laundromats. I'm looking at you, Capricia, or farmers markets or movie theaters like Becky in California. So share in the chat box if there is a place that's worked well for you in the past. And if you already have plans for Juneteenth, maybe you're going to a cookout, maybe you're going to a family reunion, whatever you're doing, make voter registration a part of it. Bring our When We All Vote tools with you and make sure that as you're having this larger conversation about Juneteenth, we're also talking about the need to be civically engaged. Whatever way you choose to participate, just get out there, get in your community, get people registering to vote or checking their voter registration. Um, and I'm seeing some really great ideas in the chat, which makes me want to kind of check in with you all. Um, I just shared these three ideas for how people can take action. And is there anyone who feels called to to raise their hand, to maybe share with the group, if you are planning something for Juneteenth and you would like to make voter registration a part of it. All right, I'm seeing a couple raised hands. Um, Jasmine, Jasmine Bird, hello. What do you have to share? I'd love to hear what you are planning for Juneteenth. Hi, Arisa. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, my name is Jasmine Bird and HBCU graduate, Central State University. Um, and I am working with an organization called Juneteenth Freedom Festival, and it's going to be in Charleston, South Carolina. And we are doing a whole day of events. I am the owner of a company called The Diva Files, and we are doing a Juneteenth couch party. So I'm very excited about this. So during voter registration last year, we did a couple of voter registration um, couch parties where we had um, members of the Divine Nine. We had several celebrities like Tamron Hall. We had Hill Harper. 
we had Pretty V, and we had a lot of HBCU presidents and queens come on to our Instagram Live, The Diva Files, and discuss the importance of voting. So this year, we're kind of flipping it a little bit. We're going to be talking about the importance of Juneteenth and celebrating and mobilizing Juneteenth um, throughout the country. And we have several HBCU queens. We have several um, celebrities that are signing up, in which I'm super excited because we'll be doing flyers pretty soon. And so I'm just very excited to be working with Arisa and when we all vote, because it's just been an amazing platform for us to be able to share and be able to mobilize and discuss important things like Juneteenth and registering people to vote. Jasmine, that is incredible. And I hope you're seeing all this love for you in the chat. <laughs> yes, girl, get it. Thank <laughs> you. Amazing. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for being part of this work. I love the continuation of the couch party branding. The journey continues. Thank you for being on this team, Jasmine, and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. And I'm just going to briefly ask one more volunteer to share. Um, Wanda, would you like to share with the group what you're thinking about Juneteenth? Absolutely. So my name is Wanda Reeves and I'm here in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. I'm also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And I wanted to uh, just put it out there that I have organized a 5K. This is actually the first Juneteenth ATL 5K here in Atlanta. But what we have also, we have an option for anybody to sign up and complete the race virtually. So not only are we trying to honor June 19th, you know, 1865 and reflect, but we also want to incorporate some healthy and active lifestyle. We also have a table where some of the When We All Vote uh, volunteers are going to be there uh, to register people and to get the word out about voting. We're super, super excited about that. So we already have, I think Kai is putting a, a document in the chat where you can sign up to help us come out and get the word out. So we'll have flyers getting everybody registered to vote. And I'm also going to put the link in the chat if that's okay um, for everybody yes, to register for the race. And again, like I said, you don't have to be here in Atlanta. You can be wherever you are and complete the race virtually. Just by registering, you get a t-shirt, get a medal and a mask. So we are super excited about this. So support us if you can. We'd appreciate it. Yes, can we get can we get a chat box round of applause for Wanda um, and all the incredible things that she and Jasmine and I'm I'm sure so many of you are planning. How creative, how iconic! I'm just so excited to see all of the incredible things that you all do, and I hope that. Uh, what Wanda just said and Jasmine sharing about what they're doing for Juneteenth. I hope that inspires some of you. So thank you, you both so much for sharing and for uh, sharing your inspiration with the group. So let's get into how we execute. We have these ideas, right? But we have to actually plan and make sure that we are delivering. So when you are, if you are a When We All Vote volunteer, you know how big we are on preparation. Um, preparing will help you feel ready to do this work on the day of, and it's easy. It'll also make you look credible as a ambassador of When We All Vote in your community. So we have a toolkit that we will go over in just a couple of minutes, uh, but these are some steps that you should do as you prepare for your Juneteenth weekend of action. One, go ahead and review the toolkit that we will share in a few minutes. You're gonna wanna print it out. We have some do's and don'ts on there that you can print out about how to handle some of these voter registration conversations and situations. There's important things for you to keep in mind. Two, make sure that you have your supplies. Like Wanda just said, you want to have your mask. You want to make sure that everyone with you has their mask. If you are running a 5K virtually, uh, or maybe you were just registering voters with a voter registration table, make sure that you have your technology, your phone, your iPad, your tablet, whatever charged up. Make sure that if you are hosting a voter registration table, you have some disinfectant wipes, everything that you need to feel comfortable and safe. Three, use when we all vote branding. So we're gonna roll out that toolkit tonight that has printable flyers that you can put all over your voter registration table. You can 
print out these flyers for voters to take with them. It's gonna be super helpful for you as you're registering voters in your community. And lastly, get comfortable explaining how to use the QR code that you will see on the right. Remember, this is one of the main ways that you will have folks update their registration, check their registration, or register to vote. And as a reminder, you're just gonna to wanna to take your phone, you are going to go to your camera app, hover over that QR code, and that is how it works. And now that we've talked a little bit about preparing, let's talk about some of our best practices. The, this is phase two. This is, we've prepared, we know where we're gonna be, we know when, we know what we're doing, and now it's about having those conversations. So whether you have done voter registration work with us before, um, or whether you are entirely new, dig into these best practices uh, because these are really important to keep in mind as you are registering voters. One, be approachable but don't wait to be approached. Having a friendly demeanor goes a very long way when it comes to registering voters. So be polite, be respectful. It's not productive to, to argue with anyone uh, and it's most productive to just get out in your community, talk to your neighbors, take a genuine interest in what motivates them and make sure that uh, you are having those conversations about the importance of being civically engaged. Two, if this doesn't come naturally to you, that is okay. Smile, speak with confidence, uh, fake it until you make it if you need to. Remember, this work is important and we are blessed to be doing it together. Three, make the correct ask. Remember, if you were with us last year, we do not ask the question, are you registered to vote? We ask the question, is your voter registration up to date? Or when was the last time you updated your voter registration? And this is because people genuinely often believe that they are registered to vote, but maybe their last name has changed, their address has changed, or sometimes people might be afraid to admit that they aren't registered to vote. So that's how we get around that. We're gonna make them stop and think a little bit about when the last time was that they updated their registration. Four, in the spirit of being approachable, make eye contact, eyeball to eyeball, without sunglasses, make a personal connection, engage with people. Remember, these are your neighbors. And that's what Juneteenth is about. It's about getting to know our neighbors. Five, catch people in line as they are exiting and entering, particularly if you are in a high traffic area, think about where the people are. Um, if you are doing a voter registration table at a county fair and there's a food court or people are waiting in line, I would make a beeline to that area. And as people are waiting, engage them in those conversations. And lastly, we are still in a pandemic, so wear your mask, stay six feet apart, feel comfortable, feel safe, do whatever you need to do to do so, and please follow CDC guidelines, follow state and local guidance to stay safe and to make the people around you feel comfortable. All right, everyone. So those are our best practices. We talked a little bit about what we need to do to prepare. And we have two key resources to talk you through both of these things, uh, starting with a Juneteenth Weekend of Action Toolkit that I'm going to pull up right here. So this is our Juneteenth Weekend of Action Toolkit, and this is the guide that you will use to register voters during that Juneteenth Weekend of Action from June 17th to 20th. It is on our website at weall.vote slash Juneteenth Kit. You can download it, you can print it. Uh, let me show you these flyers. You can print out these flyers that have our QR code on them for 2021. Um, and this will be the tool that you use to register voters during this weekend of action. Like we mentioned, it has those do's and don'ts. It has the QR code. It has helpful advice when you're registering voters using paper forms. 
um, which is super important for you all to take a look at if your state uses paper forms. And it has a bunch of links and resources for your use. So Sam pops that link in the chat box. Please click on it, download it, print it, use it as you're planning your Juneteenth voter registration event. And then the second tool that I want to walk us through uh, is our Juneteenth event page. So we will be registering our events for Juneteenth on our Juneteenth event page. Uh, and that will be at weall.vote slash Juneteenth. If you were with us last year, you know that we used a platform called Mobilize, uh, where you were all were able to register events and you were able to um, get those events approved by the One We All Vote team. You get a special event link that you can share to social media. So the Mobilize page at weall.vote slash Juneteenth will help us see our collective impact during this weekend of action. It's really quick, it's really easy. All you need to do is go to that link. You're gonna fill out uh, what the title of your event is. So Wanda might write uh, Juneteenth 5K. Um, whatever your event is, you're going to be able to customize your title to send a message to your guests about where your event is and when and all the details they need to know. And then you will be able, after that event is approved by our When We All Vote team, you will be able to take that link and share it to social media so that you can recruit as many people as possible. So those are the tool two tools that I want us to really ground us in our work for this weekend of action. Our Juneteenth toolkit at weall.vote slash Juneteenth kit with everything that you need to know to have those conversations and to do this work in your community. And then the event post page that you will use to be part of this collective impact with When We All Vote and to spread the word about your event. And that is weall.vote slash Juneteenth. All right, everyone. So that is what we are doing for this Juneteenth weekend of action. And I would actually like to, to open up the floor and try to talk about some best practices. We have new volunteers here. We have uh, super captains and voting squad captains that have been with When We All Vote since the beginning. So if you have best practices about what you've learned, I saw a couple in the chat earlier. Um, I think Capricia shared a couple about uh, registering voters at sports events. I know that she hit some basketball courts and talked to voters. Um, I know that Pat in Olive Branch, Mississippi and Becky in Palm Springs, California have talked about creating business cards to hand out to voters, uh, which is super insightful and has actually given us and our When We All Vote team ideas about what resources might be helpful for voters. So if you have best practices to share, pop in the chat or raise your hand. And this is also a time where if you have questions about how to get started, you can, you can ask those questions to this group. All right, I'm seeing Faye says high school graduations. Um, Beth says, I live near Palm Springs, would love to connect with Becky and whoever lives near here. Beth, yes. Uh, so we have a When We All Vote Facebook group that you can join. Uh, and the link to that is in that Juneteenth toolkit at weall.vote slash Juneteenth kit. Um, and you can join that Facebook group to get connected to voting squad captains in your area. All right, and Tracy, I would recommend the same thing to you. If you are looking for voting squad captains in your area to collaborate with, um, and for all of you who register Juneteenth events with us on that event page I mentioned, that mobilize page, um, what, if you mark your event as public, you'll have an option to mark it as public or private. And if you mark it as public, it's available to see on the whole When We All Vote event page. 
And I believe that you can message other hosts who are hosting events in your area and get in touch with them that way. So those are the two things that I would recommend. Let's see. Mary asked, does the kit show how to get the registration forms? I assume that one must go through the county and how to do this so that the registrations won't be disqualified. Mary, that is exactly right. Uh, so when we all vote does not collect paper forms um, and a lot of states require folks to be deputized to be collecting paper forms. So if that is something that you are interested in, I would highly, highly recommend that you head to your Secretary of State website, your local board of elections, check in and see what the, the state and local regulations are in your area for who can register voters. And that'll be super helpful for you as you are engaging with paper forms. All right, and thank you to all the volunteers who have popped in the chat and who are helping answer some of these questions. I see you. I see you and I am so proud of you. Um, so thank you everyone and keep, keep your questions coming. Our When We All Vote team is online here and we also have, um, again, our Facebook group, which is in the toolkit. And we have an email address in the toolkit as well that I will pop in the chat. And you can message us if you have any questions about how to get started uh, or about volunteering with When We All Vote in general. So we have that, let me just pop that in there when we all vote volunteers. Okay, perfect. So please get in touch with us if you need any additional help, check out that toolkit and remember that our team is always here for you regardless of where you are in your volunteer journey. Just a few things to keep in mind as we move into the next steps tonight. Remember when we all vote is nonpartisan. So we do not support or oppose candidates or parties. You should not ask applicants uh, who are registering to vote about their political positions. And also don't wear partisan clothing, buttons or hats. Um, I, I for one love wearing my When We All Vote vote mask. Um, when I am out in the community, that's okay. You en can encourage people to vote, to be engaged. But again, we are not advocating for any candidate, any party, any platform. We want people to get out there because it is their right to vote. And two, like the question that came up a couple minutes ago, we don't accept paper forms. If you live in a state that only uses paper or you would like to use paper forms, make sure to follow the process set down by your state officials. Otherwise, you can use our QR code. Um, and again, that is in the Juneteenth toolkit at weall.vote slash Juneteenth kit. The third recommendation that we have is uh, to always follow state and federal guidelines. And the last one is not to provide incentives for registering to vote, no matter how small. If we are giving stickers to people who are registering to vote, we are giving stickers, we're offering stickers at least to everyone, everyone who comes by our table, everyone who is present. It is so important not to offer incentives because registering to vote and being engaged in this democracy is an incentive in itself. And remember everyone, it's so important to report back to the When We All Vote team after you take action for Juneteenth. If you are taking action with us, tell us what you did, tell us how it went, tell us how many voters you registered uh, using our report back form at weall.vote slash report back. And I will say, especially if you are registering voters using paper forms, it is so, so, so important to fill out this form and to circle back with our team so that we can measure our impact collectively. All right? So make sure that you are checking out our report back form. Uh, again, Sam pasted that in the chat and that's weall.vote slash report back. And that is also an opportunity for you all to provide feedback to our When We All Vote team. So it'll be a great resource for you, whether you're using paper forms or not, um, whether you have constructive uh, thoughts about what 
what are what resources could be provided in the future, make sure that you're filling that form out and circling back with our team. And that brings me to our last note before we dig into our next steps and our homework ahead of Juneteenth. And that is talking about our local chapter program. Uh, I have been lucky enough to talk to some of you about the road ahead for When We All Vote. And as you know, When We All Vote is here to stay. We are a long-term hub for registration and civic education and advocacy. And it starts by building an inclusive and tight-knit community uh, in election years and off. So that is why we are launching a local chapter program that will be pivotal to registering voters and fostering civic participation and defending democracy in the wake of these attacks on our voting rights. And we are asking super volunteers like you to build when we all vote chapters in your communities and serve as on the ground muscle uh, for when we all vote in our advocacy initiatives and all that we are doing on the ground. So I wanna hear from you and actually get a sense for if you would be interested in joining a program like this, uh, whether you're interested in starting a chapter whether you are interested in joining an existing chapter uh, that another When We All Vote volunteer may start, think about your journey with When We All Vote. Think about if this program would be a good fit for you. And remember that this would be a hyper local program. So if you live in a state that is currently experiencing a lot of efforts to suppress the right to vote, you would have an opportunity to take meaningful action to fight that and to be guided and supported in that work. All right, I'm seeing so many responses here. Uh, a lot of people who are interested in joining a chapter. And yes, so we are wanting to launch this program in summer and hold an information session this summer for people who are interested in either forming a chapter or joining a When We All Vote chapter. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so many people, I love this. I love the enthusiasm. And again, guys, I know that some of you are new to this movement. Some of you haven't registered voters before. I know that programs like this can seem like a heavy lift, but please remember that you are in the right place. That regardless of where you're coming at this work from, there is a home here for you. And I'm just so happy that you are on this team. We couldn't do this work without you. So thank you for that. Uh, and if you responded yes to that, we will be in touch with you. So keep an eye out in your email. All right, everyone. So we have a couple next steps before we end our time together this evening. One, make sure that you download our toolkit at weall.vote slash Juneteenth kit. This will be the resource with that QR code that you will hover your phone camera over that will direct you to our voter registration website. And again, that is weall.vote slash Juneteenth kit. Two, create your When We All Vote event with our weekend of action at weall.vote slash Juneteenth. This will help us track what we're doing across the country. This will help you uh, advertise your event on social media. And it'll be an incredible resource for us as we figure out what our total impact was this Juneteenth. And lastly, join our monthly chapter convenings that will begin this summer. Look out for an email from our team in the coming months with an invitation to an informational call about this program. Uh, I cannot wait to see you all there. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for organizing and fighting and stepping up and being the change that we want to see. Thank you for being part of this team because remember this work is not about what one of us 
can do. It's about what all of us can do together. And together, we are going to build on the progress of those who came before us. Together, we will fight and protect our right to vote. I cannot wait to see all the change that you accomplish in June. I cannot wait for us to honor Juneteenth together to lift each other up and to make an even bigger impact in 2021 and beyond. Thank you so much for being part of this incredible journey. Don't forget to use those tools to make a huge difference this Juneteenth, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.